good evening folks, Dan for Shizzle here again. Um, right, so, there was a mod that came out um, a little while ago that as soon as it came out everybody went mental for it and that was this little beauty which is Kato's Hammer. Now this is a clone, I'm not sure of manufacturer so what I'm gonna quickly do is just quickly type into Google hammer clone I think it's EH Pro but I'm not again I'm not sure it doesn't seem like a hate cigar version to me and it doesn't seem like tobacco it seems I'm not sure. When I do find out, I will find out and I will update this video. I won't film anything extra for this video, but in the description I will tell you whether it is EH Pro or H Cigar or indeed Tobacco or any but any of the other Chinese ones that do do, do, do cloning. Um, this this certain version is 18350, 18500 and 18650, so any battery you want to put in it will go in it. So, what we'll do is we'll flip the camera down, we'll get our special black leather surface out and I'll show you some close-ups and what you get with it and what you don't get with it and all that sort of good stuff. See you in a second. Just to put this right before we go into close the RP mode is this is the Tobacco version. I've just done a few Google searches and this box comes up if you type in Tobacco Hammer, hammer Clone. So, Hammo, hammer, hammo, hammer. Yeah. <laughs> this is what will come up if you type in Tobacco Hammer Clone, you'll see this box. So that says to me this is Tobacco version. So make of that what you will, and I'll see you in the close ups. Right then, here we have a box. What you might find inside this box is written on the box it is the hammer. Now, this box was quite a lot smaller than I expected it to be but it is a decent box I mean the cardboard is pretty thick and it's well well put together so yeah I like the box here we have a hammer now this is our mod this is our 18500 tube I believe and this is our 18650 tube so take that out if I can get it out it's not easy to do one handed actually take that out and we'll take that out now do you want me to dismantle the, the, the hammer I can dismantle the hammer if you'd like me to alright here's our switch section right there switch does dismantle even it dismantles right down so again I can do that if you want me to this ring is very 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 important and I'll explain why in a second we'll get it stripped down first Right, oh, I should show you where all this is coming from, shouldn't I? Really? Right. This is our ring that I'm telling you about, and there is a special sort of way of doing things with that ring. So, right. There's our switch. This is where it's all come from. This is the what top of our mod, side of our mod. I'm not sure. Either way, that's where our ring has come from. So there's the ring. There's our switch. Here is our hammer. Now, inside here houses your what is supposed to be a spring loaded 510 center pin, but the spring is a bit shoddy. Now, I can show you this here. If I just move this out of the way for a second, I can show you how much this is spring loaded. Now, on further inspection this does have a spring in it and what I've had to do a couple of times now is just take this off and in your hand will fall a little tiny spring now I'm not sure how well the camera will pick up how small that spring is but that spring is damn tiny All right, and it's not the best at being compressed 
because when it compresses that happens um, there I am, there I am with focus you get just the compression it's like it's, it's stuck together basically so what you have to do is you have to dismantle your switch and just prise it apart a little just like that not too much because you don't want to bend it out of shape so and if you do happen to bend it out of shape just bend it back in it's a very very pliable spring so just bend it out a little that would do perfectly then pop your spring back in like that no not like that like that put your copper contact back on and then screw it down now with any luck this should now be spring loaded again and it is as we can see we have spring again so it's it's annoying it is very annoying but it's it's maintenance you can fix it right so back to our hammer here's what we have left so inside the hammer right here is a copper tube no a brass tube and your brass tube has these plastics around it and that is to stop it shorting on the hammer itself what this brass tube is this brass tube is your positive this is a big big fat positive connection so as you slide this in you can see we've got a brass tube sticking out that is where the small contact the small spring loaded contact gets so now as you can see we've got brass onto brass that little spring in the middle isn't brass but I can't see it losing too much to be honest uh, I can't see it making too much of a difference it is very very small um, now we've got brass onto brass so now that brass pipe that I showed you this one that's inside is now contacting that brass pin that is our positive connection so when you screw your Atty on that is you, that is a that is a very very decent connection for your Atty right so this 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 little threaded piece of mystery um, I'm not sure why they've done it this way and even the actual real one does it this way too so it's not something the cloners have done for a change um, it seems it just seems strange what I want to do is I'm going to be using this in 18650 mode now if you screw this all the way down without the other tube in place you will have a gap so what I like to do is I like to leave a couple of threads showing before I screw on my 18650 tube because then you get a seamless a seamless look and you can carry on screwing because they do both thread the same way so it doesn't really matter either way okay um, alright and that is our 18650 mode so now we're going to want to switch our switch is fully adjustable by this little gold screw here um, I hasten to add that is the only really thing that adjusts we do have a locking ring which you have to be careful with this locking ring because it will lock on you and if it sort of locks down on you like this it's a bitch to get open again so be careful with that be very careful with that because it can be a bitch put some put some thread lube or some nolax on and just forget about it so all right, there's our, our switch so we need a battery now this is my battery what I want to do is I want to put this positive side down and then I want to put the switch on the right way and that is it we have a fully assembled 18650 hammer now a lot of people won't like to use this in 18650 because it seems like a pipe mod so I'm just going to show you what it quickly looks like inside I mean not inside in 18350 mode just for your sake I don't use 18350s really um, it's a very very rare occasion I'll use an 18350 battery but switch this far to pieces fabulous 
<laughs> oh, the joys of being a YouTube reviewer. There we go. Right. Now, this is our switch. Oh, dear. Right, anyway. I should have showed you this switch anyway, so it's worked out kind of handy. Right, where are we? There we are. Right, so. Get that central. There we are. This is our switch. This is our locking ring piece. Lock <laughs> that, that wasn't supposed to be a joke. That is our locking ring. This is our firing button motif there, quite lovely. This is our assembly. This is our screw and this is our spring. So what we want to do is we want to take this, we want to screw that back in there, like so. That's done. Put the, put the little spring in this piece, take your button, squish the spring down with the button, so you're left with something like that. Just remember there is a spring in there, so hold it quite tightly. Then you want to take your little screw and screw it back together, like so. There's our switch reassembled, quite easy to do. Right, now what I was actually doing was showing you the Kato in 18350 mode, which is the mode that most people will use it in, I'll admit it. Um, it does look rather snazzy in 18350 mode. Rather snazzy. I must say about all of these engravings is that the engraving is, it's not... It's engraved, yeah, but it's not the deepest of engravings on this version. It's not gonna, you, it's not gonna blow you away. But saying that, this piece here, around the 510 connection, is very deeply engraved, and it is rather well done. But the logos and stuff, yes, they're engraved. How long they will last, I do not know. And we do have venting for a battery there. I forgot to mention that. So back to what I was doing before the switch and everything just went tits up so there's that where's my 18650 tube there's our 18650 tube remember having a couple of threads showing otherwise you get threads showing All right like that you see see how you see the gap and I can see threads in there so what I like to do is have a couple of threads showing on this locking ring before I start screwing my 18650 tube in. So there we go, holding it, holding it, holding it, and then let them screw together. Like so, and it gives you a more seamless look. Oh God, right. So 18650 in, positive side down, and switch. We have rattle. Um, batteries that fit this mod, it can be quite a specific mod. If you find a battery that doesn't do this, keep it and keep it charged and use it specifically for your hammer. Because I've not found any decent way of stopping the battery rattle. So, I mean, it probably is a way. I haven't found it yet. Um, the only way I can think of stopping the battery rattle would be to screw this all the way down onto the threads, like that, and screwing down. No. So it will, it will rattle, but once the button's pressed, there's no rattle. I don't know if that makes it any better or not, but that's how it is. On, on this today, I'm going to be using a killer, so. I'm just going to screw my killer on. Now the killer is on in, in an AGR Carto tank. So, right, you see Carto tank. I'm just going to push the Carto tank all the way down onto the onto the connection. And the reason for that is I can open up my my flow then, and then 
because of the way the killer works it's drawing air and because of how deep these engravings are there is loads and loads of airflow. Yes, right, I'm gonna come back up to me and we'll see how it vapes. Right. We have liftoff. Now, the reason I'm using the killer on this is because I found them to be a good combination. They work well together and they look good together. Um, hmm. As you can see, the performance of this, because of that copper tube and the way the 510 connects to that copper tube and it just gives you such awesome conductivity. What I get is I get a real hard hit. Now you'll remember my M16 review where I was reviewing the M16, I'm just playing with the focus, sorry. Uh, <laughs> that's just out of nowhere. You remember with my M16 review that because of its, its makeup, because it's made of brass, it's solid brass, conductivity is excellent. With this you're getting exactly the same, but it's it's not full brass, it's uh, actually, I believe it's stainless steel, but with that brass insert, so. performance oh yeah because of that brass insert you're getting such good conductivity and you can really feel it in the atomizer you can feel that that is firing really well you can feel it and you know that you are getting you're getting as much as that battery can give now I was gonna get the multimeter out and test it and see how much is coming out of the pin and all that but I don't need to because I know that this is performing to maximum capabilities. I know that that battery isn't fully charged, I know that battery sits at about 3.9 volts, so. For 3.9 volts, I mean this is this killer is built at around 2 ohms. I always build the killer at high ohms because I like to use it on variable voltage devices. So, but with this being built at about two ohms, I'm getting such a powerful hit, even on such a high atomizer. Um, vapor production. I mean, the mod had doesn't have much to do with vapor production, if I'm honest. It's more. It's all about the killer, but. I'm getting more vapor than I would out of a variable wattage device normally and I think that's because of the airflow around this 510 I think I'm getting a lot more airflow definitely more airflow that was a lung hit to do a lung hit on a killer you're gonna have to have a superior airflow and that's what I'm exactly what I'm getting right that was the Kato hammer it is available from two seconds it is available from vapormods.co.uk and they have it for the price of one second oh, 45 pound now that's a lot of mod for 45 pound it, it, it's smaller than I thought it was going to be I'll, I'll give it that it's smaller than I thought it was going to be a handful I thought I was going to hold it and it was going to fill my hand but then I realized I have giant shovel hands so that was just that was just wrong of me to think um, it is pipe shape and it is pipeable but what I find myself doing is I'm holding it as an L shape and I'm using it like that and it's performing excellently in that mode and it is comfortable it is comfortable to hold 
very comfortable. That killer is kicking. <laughs> anyway, it's available for forty-five pound. In my opinion, for forty-five pound, that is a very, very, very fucking decent mod. That is a very effing. Oh, I might bleep that bit. That is a very effing decent mod for the money. Forty-five pound. If you're not comfortable with clones, obviously don't buy one. But if you are comfortable with clones, it's a spot on buy. Forty-five quid. I'm not sure if it's available anywhere cheaper, and if it is, I'll tell you because that's how I am. I've been Dan Shizzle, and I'll see you in the next one.